Hi guys! Before I dive into the beginning of this video, this is a little insert that I recorded after. Just letting you know, it's kind of a long video. Stick with me. I do have some really good points to make. But also, Shallon Lester, if you are the one watching this video, this message is for you. I was really fan a fan of your content. I really think you're a very charismatic person. I don't think you're a terrible person at heart or even a bad person at heart. I just really hope that you start to see that we're not trying to attack you. We're just trying to get you to see yourself because that is the only way that you can improve and that is the only way that you can start making content that the fans of you that are starting to drop off can actually get behind. Uh, yeah. So without further ado, thank you for watching. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mac Guerrero. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people have already talked about on the internet. So if you've already heard the bulk of it, you know, just know that I am not the first one to have spoken about this. I will also list some of the first videos that I found that were really, really, really good, as well as some videos that came out lately that I also thought were really good um, and actually created by former watchers, which I think is really important. Uh, so before I get into talking about Shallon Lester, I'm gonna go ahead and remind you guys that you can follow me on social media. I've got a YouTube, a YouTube, an Instagram, a Facebook, as well as a TikTok at Mac Guerrero. On TikTok, I mostly dance and sometimes do voiceovers and I find them really entertaining. And then on Instagram, as well as Facebook, I just kind of post like daily life content, you know, updates about new things I might be doing with my YouTube and the like. So go ahead and check me out there. You can also find mysticalmac.com where you will find my nearly daily blog as well as information about my podcast mystical mac which comes out in video on youtube as well and you can find info about my tarot card readings and you know just i guess get a feel for my style so of course like subscribe click the bell and i'm really grateful you tuned in without further ado let's get into it i feel like i'm gonna be grabbing onto my hands a lot so i'm just gonna take off my rings <laughs> um all right Shallon Lester. Um, lots and lots of people have already made videos about Shallon Lester. Uh, D'Angelo Wallace was the first one to come out with kind of like a calling out sort of video. Um, and then there have been lots after that. The first wave uh, was a lot of commentary channels just calling her out. Some of them were a little nasty, you know. It happens. She's been a little nasty as well. So... I'm not saying an eye for an eye is like a good thing, but I'm just saying, you know, there has been some hate, but for the most part, there was a lot of constructive criticism from these commentary channels. Also, I have notes, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, and then kind of like the second wave of videos that started coming out were former fan videos. And this is kind of where I'm at. Um, I haven't really decided what to name this title or this video as I'm filming right now, but I'm thinking about something along the lines of confession from a former shower liner, in parentheses, I mean showerliner. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is because I did used to watch her content for a brief time. Yes, I did find her probably like, I don't know, maybe, mm, I want to say September, not September. I want to say maybe August, July or August of last year. That's when I found her. Uh, and I've been watching, or I had been watching kind of up until I slowed down around October because I really wasn't into the whole evil week thing, which I will get into later. Um, however, up until recently, I've been, mostly recently, it's been something that I put on in the background, like while I'm doing my makeup. And I have found myself actually uh, kind of scoffing and like rolling my eyes at a lot of things that she said lately, but I never thought thought to really take the stance of a lot of this stuff is problematic and that is my bad and that is something that um, I'm owning up to as a person, a conscious person living on this planet. Um, and so I also wanted to make a former Shaloner sort of video because I, along with the, the commentary channels that have been, you know, coming out with a lot of really great content, there's this kind of sense of also like personally watching a lot of that of those, of those videos as much as it was like a really great reality check for me and something that I really needed to watch um, I felt a little bit judged and unfortunately I you know I don't think that that's what commentary channels are intending to do um, however I did feel judged because there's a lot of like oh my god how could people even watch this 
And a lot of those commentary channels like isolated um, the problematic things, which thank you. Like obviously, why are we gonna watch like the positive stuff when we're calling her out for the problematic stuff? We're obviously not calling her out for giving good advice in certain situations, you know? So um, when you compile all of that negative content, of course it's going to seem like this person is completely unwatchable and as if they have absolutely nothing good to say, but that's not the case. Um, if you have watched my videos, if you're not new to this channel, you know that I like to be a very aware person. I like to encourage us to self-inquire. I like to encourage ourselves to honestly go after the answers instead of just blindly taking what people say. And even if that means, you know, following this intuitive gut of, oh my gosh, this seems really legit. If you're going to spew it out to people, go do your research. Make sure it is something legit before you misinform people. It is so, like, information is, is like the coronavirus like bad information can rapid fire spread and it can be really 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 harmful and frankly I didn't want to make this video but I'm making it because I believe that the only way that Shallon is going to hopefully become aware of herself and is going to see herself and really start to address the things that she needs to address if she's going to continue making content that is going to impact the kinds of people that she reaches which is a lot of young women by the way young impressionable women whom are not as set in themselves and don't have the discernment, you know, to to see when somebody is manipulating them. Um, and I speak as a woman whom I, I thought that I was all self-aware and, and stuff. And I didn't see a lot of things that got pulled out to the surface. One, a lot of them were like old tweets and things that I just had never looked for. Um, but also other things that got kind of like pulled to the surface um, and it were, they were things that they were like, they were these comments that were scattered over time that I was like scoffing and rolling my eyes at, but when compiled together, they actually form a, a profile of thought that is really problematic and that if these opinions continue to be spewed and, uh, people just, especially young people just kind of take them as they are because this person makes themselves look like this, this big sister or this cool aunt that, uh, you know, is sitting on her couch and giving you advice. Like it's really dangerous to just adopt someone's beliefs like that because you feel like you can trust them. And one of the things that Shallon does really well with her delivery, and I know this because I am a performer as well. I mean, I don't know if Shallon ever did like, you know, legitimate acting or anything like that, but I've been a performer my whole life. And being able to speak and engage an audience is something that I've learned to do. And so she, you know, I can honor that that is something that she does incredibly well. Um, and it makes her seem, makes her come across like someone you can trust, especially when you're in a position that is vulnerable. Like when I first found her, I was very vulnerable in the sense that I had just gone through a breakup that really shook me. And to be honest, a lot of her breakup videos were good. A lot of her dating advice videos, some of her confident in, confidence videos had flaws. However, you know, these are the same, these are flaws that derive from the things that have been brought to light. So. Without further ado, let me just like get into um, the the deal. If you wanna look up about Shallon Lester, like really just type Shallon Lester on YouTube. I'm not going to like waste, I've already talked for eight minutes and 30, for eight minutes and 30 seconds. I'm not going to talk anymore, like giving you super amounts of background. Um, I will give you the very minimum that she normally gives you. She used to be an editor at Star Magazine. Celebrity gossip is kind of a thing that she's always, been around and into um, and before she used to make videos that included a lot more personal experience and less talking about the celebrities and lately she's taken to talking about the celebrities a lot more instead of really relate us to the personal experience you know that she is deriving from in order to give us advice she's also taken to psychoanalyzing people rather seriously uh, which is unfortunate and now I'm gonna say something that is kind of an unpopular opinion, but I promise you it's not really the crux of this. Like, I've met a lot of amazing people that do not have psych credentials that have helped me just as much as say my therapists have helped me. But that's not to say that I would encourage those people to go out and psychoanalyze people on YouTube. You know, especially when you know for a fact she's never sat 
with that person face to face and even if she has it's not a viable thing you know i'm not saying like i said i'm not saying that you need credentials in order to be helpful i don't have psychology credentials but i have a lot of life experience around the issues that i cover and whenever i speak i let you guys know that i'm taking from my life experience that you know whenever i especially lately i've been trying to use more personal examples you know and nowhere have I ever tried to psychoanalyze anyone. And I think that that's something that's really dangerous. And I feel like that can perpetuate the same kind of uh, behavior in her viewers that intend to create a YouTube channel. So um, she actually did come out with an apology about, um, about this. Uh, and the reason I just did that is because I want to be really clear of where I'm going with it here. Um, I, I just told you why I started to watch her videos. I just told you why someone may watch her videos. Now, let's get into uh, the nitty gritty of a little bit of the nitty gritty of what she's getting called out for. Okay, so one of the things is what I just mentioned, psychoanalyzing without a credential. And even, I'm sorry, even if you do have a credential, if you haven't met with a person face to face, if you haven't really, you know, done the tests necessary, why are you going to go on the internet and just psychoanalyze somebody and name somebody a psychopath or name somebody another incredibly serious <laughs> psych, um, psychological disorder? Like, why are you just, why are you going to do that? There's just no point, right? Um, so psycho psychoanalyzing people, not sweet. Um, another thing that she has been called out for is uh, slander. And creating problematic comments about these celebrities that she covers um, basically slander is gonna be anything that's harmful that you can't prove is true uh, you know star magazine is not necessarily a very reliable magazine none of those tabloids really are so you know and I'm gonna tie in this whole slander thing with another thing she's been called out for not having any sources and rather I mean, not saying that she doesn't have sources, but not listing her sources, not letting us know what those sources are, and then proceeding to make these like very harmful assumptions and these very slanderous comments about the celebrities that she's speaking with, uh, uh, speaking about, especially the celebrities that she has a peculiar negative bias towards, uh, which includes Selena Gomez, Kylie Jenner, and a few of the Kardashians. Um, and I'm sure there's there are a couple more that I'm not thinking about. Um, and then, of course, you know, super hyping up the celebrities that she has a positive bias for. So Haley Baldwin, or rather Haley Bieber, sorry. Um, Rihanna. I want to think of another. I can't quite think of. Oh, other celebrities she's like indirectly brought down and directly kind of Taylor Swift. Um, and Lizzo and Taylor Swift. I, I'm actually going to talk about Taylor Swift when I get to the part where I'm talking about the major impact that she's had on me and my personal peeves. Um, and I'm not even going to say, you guys, I apologize. This video is likely going to be a little bit long, so bear with me. Um, okay. So yeah, she's getting called out for all of these things, right? And then the last one that she's getting called out for um, is, or not the last one, but a couple more she's getting called out for. She's getting called out for these very racist remarks uh, and these very xenophobic remarks uh, that she's been making uh, recently and apparently throughout her entire YouTube career, which by the way, she's been on YouTube like for about eight years or so, apparently. Um, and she's just been more consistent since 2012, which was information I got from one of the videos that I'm gonna list below. Um, actually, from one of the videos that I just recently watched, not necessarily that I will list below, but you can actually check out her YouTube channel and she's been uploading more consistently since 2012. Um, okay, so she's gotten called out for that, right? Racism, kind of misogynistic stuff. Also, really harmful comments about mental health. Um, basic comments that basically say that like men are like shouldn't keep journals because that's like a wussy sort of thing to do, uh, and things like that. Like basically like talking about making these comments that say like the same things that help women psychologically men shouldn't do because it's like a womanly thing to do. Like no, if my boyfriend wants to journal, I am all for it. Literally. There is nothing wussy about men expressing their feelings and about men 
um, really diving deep into themselves. I think that this is how we created such an imbalanced patriarchy in the first place, is men being so disconnected from that part of themselves. That is both feminine and masculine, right? And, and pure in its own right. And I think that that starts with accepting your emotions. And I'm going to get into that. Um, okay, so... Uh, those are the things that she's been called out for by other people. And then last but not least, she's also been called out for her peculiar attraction for young men. And also the fact that she is really weirdly accepting of that in a way that is a little unsettling. So when she was, oh yeah, by the way, she lies about her age incessantly, which is a personal peeve of mine. Um, because I feel like if you're preaching... Um, confidence and you know all of that nonsense then not that it's nonsense but all of that stuff you know then why are you gonna be hiding your age like if you're preaching integrity if you're preaching honesty like why are you hiding your age like and lying about it not even hiding it it's one thing to be like oh i'm not gonna tell you how old i am it's another thing to literally have your profiles say that you're five years younger than you actually are or four years younger something like that so four or five um so she was posting some very problematic, creepy tweets about Justin Bieber when she was 30 years old. She is now 39. He was 16. Now, not even when I was Justin Bieber's age and demographic, like for being super crazy about him, I was I crazy about him because I've always been into men that look more mature. I've never been into Justin Bieber because at the points where I would have been into him, he looked like a boy. He looked like a little boy. And the fact that a 30 year old woman, like I'm not even 30 yet, I'm about to be 26. And I look at pictures of him when he was 16 and I like, I wanna barf if I'm gonna think about me entertaining with him sexually in any way, shape or form. Like, no, <laughs> there's just something wrong about that for me personally, you know? And I think for a lot of people and she's getting called out for this I, I don't like the fact that the YouTube community is calling it pedophilia. There's actually a, a, a few people who have pointed out that that's not accurate. It, I'm not saying that this is good, but we're also not saying that she's legitimately gone and molested little boys. You know what I mean? Like that's not, that's going really far. However, I do want to say that I do see an issue with this very peculiar attraction for young men and the fact that she just kind of accepts it and doesn't really take responsibility for it in trying to figure out what that's all about psychologically and how she can it's not necessarily like it's one like if you like if you're 30 something and you like to date men that are say like you know 26 to your age and whatever like all right whatever but when the attraction goes to 22 21 18 these barely legal guys who to be honest are not mature enough to have a real fulfilling relationship a lot of the time and like I said I'm saying a lot of the time because I can't speak for everyone but in my experience when I was 17 I was really struggling because I wanted to date the 21 year olds I wanted to date the 19 year olds because I've always been a little bit more mature for my age and those men were more mature you know and I come from Brazil it's a lot different like the age gap thing is a lot different there of course we don't condone you know like the kinds of age gaps that it's obviously a harmful thing like no but if you're 17 and someone's 20 in brazil you know chances are the girl is much more mature than the average 17 year old boy so her dating a 20 year old is not going to be that out of pocket um and i was one of those girls so you know in my experience those boys are what they are boys and she talks about in a lot of her videos how she encourages women to date younger men because they're more malleable because they're moldable because you can instill some sort of like power over them and that just tells me that she doesn't know how to have a mature relationship and if she actually were to start unraveling this psychological thing of being into younger men she might start to gain maturity and she might start to actually start to have an, like, gain an attraction towards more mature older men 
Um, and you know, honestly, those were the comments that I really rolled my eyes at was when she would talk about how like, you know, older men can manipulate younger women much easier than older women can manipulate younger men. And I'm just like, girl, you are one of those women that are manipulating younger men. So like, what are you trying to say? That's another thing that I personally have a pee with with her is like a lot of her stuff that she says is contradictory to what she's actually doing. So um, I'll step more into that, uh, into my personal peeves a little bit later. Um, I just want to break down also the fact that like she went, by the way, after all of this stuff went down, uh, she went first to respond on Reddit, which is her smallest community. And the only official addressing of any of the stuff that was done was on one of the YouTube channels that she posted recently about Demi Lovato and the guy that she's with. Um, and it was like a snippet. It was a few minutes, you know, maybe five minutes at best. And she really didn't do it for me. And it's, I'm not a fan of cancel culture. Like I'm not, I think canceling someone is literally last resort. On the other hand, I am not opposed to canceling someone who needs the impact of being canceled in order to really see themselves and see their actions and have a come to Jesus moment. So if that's what has to happen to Shallon, to Shallon Lester for her to really start to understand the impact of what she's doing and how it's harmful and how none of us, especially those of us who used to watch her, at least I'm speaking for myself and you know, a lot of the videos that I've watched from former watchers are people that are genuinely just wanting her to see herself and don't want her to get canceled, don't want her to just, you know, get kicked off of YouTube, but rather want her to grow and learn. Just like she says, she wants her fan base to grow and learn as people. <sighs> so I'm going to just kind of break down a couple of things that she said in this portion of the video. So she talks about the YouTube community accusing her, or rather, she accuses the YouTube community of just stirring up drama. When the truth of the matter is, is that a bunch of these commentary channels, yes, some of them were very shady, I will give them that, you know, but there are a lot of stuff that she said that honestly, I can see how it's warranting a lot of shade. Totally. Um, so I'm not hating on them for that. Do I think that's a super productive way of coming at somebody? Not really but that's beside the point. The majority of those videos, however, usually 2% shade and 98% constructive criticism. So the fact that she's considering all of that constructive criticism as stirring up drama simply because it doesn't come from an audience that she normally interacts with and an audience that is just condoning and being okay with everything she says, that's unfortunate to me. That just tells me that she's honestly not seeing things from a very clear perspective. She's definitely seeing things from a very biased perspective. And it's it just told me that it's downhill from here. So next she sets up this sisterhood slash friend dynamic and she talks about that. The fact that she listens to you guys, as she says. She listens to you, the people that watch her, the people that keep her accountable, the people that message her. Well, like I said, a lot of her audience happens to be, and she said this sparingly in videos, like happens to be young women, young impressionable women, likely the women who's are who are around whom are around the ages of the men that she dates. So, you're she's basically saying that she only listens to the advice of those that watch her and those that are basically condoning her, because. I have a feeling that she's gonna look at my video and she's literally just going to bat me away, you know, and be like, she was probably never a challenger in the first place, which is super not true. Um, so I really hope that she stays to that and that she does listen to the people that watch her or at least used to watch her because um, there are a lot of us here trying to say the same things that the commentators were saying. Um, but she's not listening to us. She's listening to the people that are s supporting her. And, and I wanna say like, I support her self-awareness. I don't support her trying to veil over all of these things that she's doing. So she talks about this sisterhood, right? How this is a sisterhood. And she listens to you guys, the sisters, because this is what we do here. We just wanna grow. We just want this, we just wanted that, right? So by setting up the sisterhood slash friend dynamic, she's, instantly disarming these people in a like in disarming me too when i was watching like i like the idea of like oh my god she's like my big sister talking on her couch 
Like, but it led me to just blindly trust her in some things because she was so good at providing that big sister sort of vibe. And you know, guys, like, I consider the people who watch my YouTube, you know, my friends in a sense of like, I call you friends every, like a lot of the time when I start my YouTube videos, I say hi friends, you know, and things like that. But there, there are levels to friendship. And an internet friend is not the same as a friend who has known you your whole life or even has known you for years or even has just really known you for like a couple years of your life, you know? So by like just focusing on that sisterhood dynamic, she's actually kind of ignoring the reality of the fan and creator dynamic. And it's really important to, um, sorry guys, I keep looking at my screen. One, because I'm like really in love with this makeup I did today. I was like on a whim, but two, I just want to make sure my lighting is okay. The light's like right in front of my face. So I don't want to like turn white all of a sudden. Um, but okay, like she's using this sisterhood, this friend dynamic, and instead of, uh, and this is, I have a hard time talking about this because I do believe that there is a sense of friendship in a fan base like that. But again, friendship has levels. And by creating the sisterhood friend dynamic, she's creating it and she's making us think that it's to a degree where we can just blindly trust her as if we know her personally and we do not. And that's where ignoring the, re the creator and fan relationship is harmful because as a creator, I am responsible to give you sources or to say that something is my opinion, you know, so that as the fan, you don't just blindly take what I say, especially if you're someone who would because you're just in an age range where you are learning by pulling from others, you know? Um, also, the fact that she sets up the sisterhood dynamic and then she's consistently pitting women against each other, i.e. Kylie Jenner and Rihanna, like, that's just crazy to me. Um, so, narcissism normalized, right? That's something that she talks about that's interesting. Um, narcissism, normal, narcissism normalized. She talks about how her therapist says that she's kind of like a narcissist with a lowercase n. When she initially said this in like literally I feel like the biggest dumb like dummy on the face of the planet It sounded like it was coming from such a genuine like yeah I'm aware of this and I'm working on it place that I actually it brought me closer to her to know this But as I kept watching and you know as she mentioned it a couple times after that I started to realize like oh this is this is actually just her normalizing it and not actually taking any responsibility for this. This is her just being like, ah, I'm a narcissist. I'm like a little bit of a narcissist. It's fine. That's like me talking to my boyfriend, me like, I have abandonment issues. I'm just gonna freak out every time we fight. It's fine. <laughs> no, he would literally be like, no, like that's not okay. I need to feel like I can walk away to like, cool off before like I come back and talk to you if you're literally just gonna freak out because you have abandonment issues like what is this no it's literally like it's acknowledgement without responsibility so it's not real awareness it's it's like a knowing that she's got this thing but real awareness implies that you've got like you you understand the impact right she doesn't so lack of responsibility which causes her to have a lack of empathy and sympathy which is how she can create this this problematic content, which is how she can say the things that she's saying because she's literally got this lack of empathy, you know, and this lack of sympathy. And this, this narcissism that she claims to experience and live with actually causes her to have a very large sense of legitimacy, which makes her think that she cannot, you know, that she can get away with not giving us sources. Um, and that can make her think that she can get away with creating mental health video, mental health, mental health advice videos with any sort of credibility, you know, be it like I'm talking about abandonment issues and this is my life experience and this is what I've experienced and hopefully you can take from that. Like I would consider that kind of like a mental health advice, sort of like dealing with the fear of abandonment and all that stuff. But again though, and I actually created a video like this, this is a personal example, but again, I stated like I've, I stated why I felt 
credible to talk about it and it's because I've been dealing with abandonment my whole life and I'm gonna be you know in that video I was giving people personal input and insight to help them hopefully deal with their abandonment issues but I was not ever claiming to be someone that's credible that's going to give you foolproof advice that's going to be able to give you you know something that is going to work perfectly for your exact situation and there's no way to do that over a YouTube video because you are going look, there are lots of people that are going to be watching it you know different people so um i've got to peeve with the fact that her actions contradict her words um all the time her actions i mean her actions contradict her entire intention that she sets to grow and learn right she always talks about like you can't change what you don't acknowledge that is like a literal quote, quote from shallon lester and yet this is exactly what she's doing once all of this has come to light. She is not acknowledging any of it. And this is why I'm making this video. And this is why I'm no longer supporting her content. Because there is zero acknowledgement for the fact that she's been very problematic. And for the degree that she's been problematic. Like, literally... In, in her little apology, there is zero accountability. Even in her Reddit apology, apology, which wasn't even an apology, she goes, I'm sorry if I ruffled some feathers. Like, that's not a real apology. I'm sorry I sent, yeah, I sent a lame tweet back then. Honey, you went and deleted over a thousand of your tweets. D'Angelo Wallace's video, he's made two. It's there in the description. State all of that. There are a lot of things that Shallon has done in response to this that just tells us that she is not acknowledging any of the issues that we are bringing to light here, right? She's not walking in the light of the truth, as she likes to say. So no accountability for being called out on toxicity and, you know, shaky character, essentially. Um, and her response to all of this is, I hear you guys and you want more positivity. In my opinion, that just sounds to me like she's going to try to positive focus her way out of the very, very negative content that she's posting and she's just going to kind of like dress up this negative content in a positive light honey okay I'm, I'm gonna do something that Shallon likes to do she likes to take certain people and compare them to people that we know for certain we're so 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 just not right psychologically not right in their hearts right um her saying this right like her her saying positivity like i'm sure that when hitler was talking to his followers and when he was building the weimar republic over a decade i'm sure that he had a real positive way of talking about how the jews were the reason that their society that germany was falling i'm sure he made it look real positive i'm sure he made it look like the aryan you know race is just going to be so much better off and they're the reason and they're the de the dead weight like there is a positive way to dress up anything. And dressing up negativity and positivity is so dangerous. It's like a Trojan fucking horse. And like, that's actually how she impacted me. Oh my God. Like, okay, I'm almost done. I promise. So let's get on with this, right? So more positivity without any responsibility for the actual content just tells me that we're going to have more negative content dressed up in positivity, which I am not a fan of. Um, also, she talks about leveling a lot, how people have to level, right? Um, when they feel threatened, they either build themselves up or they tear other people down. And the way to go is to build yourself up. Uh, well, at the same time that she's talking about this, she's tearing people down in her videos. So that's really interesting. Um, okay, so I'm finally to the very last part of my video where I'm gonna be talking about the major impact that she's had on me as someone that's actually watched her for a kind of a lengthy amount of time, um, as well as some peeves of mine with her. The things that I would like roll my eyes, uh, scoff a little, that actually turn out to be things that we should really take into account and pay attention of and pay attention to. <sighs> okay, so one of my peeves, right, is um, this idea of, of evil week, all right? Evil week, that's exactly what that is. It's a week where she literally dedicates every single video that week coming out 
to um, learning evil tactics. Now, I don't believe in saying good and evil. I believe that there are things that are done with the intention to only serve yourself and screw the rest. And then there are things that are done to the intention to serve us all. And I believe that if you want to put good and evil in a certain category, evil means you're only out to serve yourself and you really don't care the impact you have on other people. Um, and good means you understand that other people are an extension of you at a higher level. And if you do something that impacts others poorly, it will eventually impact you poorly. So you choose the route of service to others, which is which you understand in serving others, you serve yourself. So don't get confused with people pleasing and with self-sacrificing. When you're acting in service to others, that can also mean say, uh, I reschedule my my lunch date with a friend because I'm not feeling in my full extroverted capacity. And so by rescheduling that lunch date, I'm actually ensuring that she and I or he and I have a really good time instead of me like trying to people please and self-sacrifice to make this particular day happen when I'm not feeling on top of it. So you see what I mean how service to others can like it can mean acting in a selfish manner, but you understand that in the long run, it is gonna serve everybody, right? This evil week was not that. Evil week was literally her taking concepts like how to cheat, how to manipulate, how to come for your enemies, or like, you can look it up, it's on her channel. And those are videos that like, I genuinely watched them out of curiosity. And there were things that if you were to take them into counter, like, oh, I could use this to watch out for a manipulative person, or I could use this to watch out for a cheater. If you look at them like that, they can be very informational, but the whole premise of it just goes against her entire channel, which just poses a huge lack of integrity for me, right? Her entire channel is, let's spread positivity, let's grow and learn as people. So why are you teaching people to do things that actually uh, spread negativity and cause them to lower themselves in vibration by putting themselves in a place where they are completely only concerned with themselves and not understanding that every action that they have will have an impact on others in the long run. Like, that's just crazy to me. Um, another peeve of mine is the fact that she lies about her age. I did talk about that. Um, it's just, like I said, it's just contradictory to me if you're super confident and like, why are you lying about your age? I don't get it. Like, whatever. Um, I have a peeve about the way that she talks about Taylor Swift. I'm not going to lie to you there. I have some issues with Taylor Swift's victim mentality. A lot of the time I have issues with certain things that she's done. However, as a whole, um, I appreciate Taylor Swift as, as a creator. I appreciate her care for her fans and her genuine care for for making this world a better place um and i really didn't like the way that she, it's not even just taylor swift i don't like the way that she basically mocks issues of celebrities simply because i don't even know why because like i said she's got some narcissistic tendencies and has a very real lack of empathy and sympathy um and seems to really just want to like i said level tear other people down to bring herself up which is silly because she's literally trying to teach us to hype ourselves up right yeah um okay uh let's see second to last she's got this shady gun for hire sort of mentality like in a lot of her videos she talks about how like she's all here for the chalantourage and she's all here for her fans and she's a gun for hire if someone's been mean to you like just let her know and she'll cyber bully them like i have an issue with this because i i just don't think that fighting fire with fire is is intelligent i don't think that creating an explosion is intelligent and i believe that hurt people hurt people so pushing more hurt towards a person that's so hurt that they're already hurting other people just doesn't seem productive to me and it doesn't seem like it's conducive to the channel that you're trying to create um let's see uh okay uh cold-blooded okay now it's actually second to last i don't like her cold-blooded warm-blooded animal um comparisons 
I frankly own a snake, or I don't even own her. Like, I, okay, I own her in the sense of, like, I take care of her. I am a snake keeper. She is literally one of the most magical beings that I've, I've ever come into contact with. And she's done so much amazing things for my life. And the fact that she is a cold-blooded animal just means that she needs her environment to regulate her own temperature. And I understand the analogy of... Like, oh, if you're a cold-blooded person, that means like you're probably self-regulating your self-esteem based on the things that are coming in from the outside. And if you're a warm-blooded person, then okay, you're probably able to regulate your own self-esteem. I like that analogy. I actually really started out liking that analogy, but she's used it so much. And she's used it in a way of pitting women against each other so much and just people against each other so much that I've started to just kind of get a bad taste for it. I've also had, you know, I've also always had this little thing in my mind that kind of makes me think like oh that actually kind of make cold makes cold-blooded animals look really bad when in reality it's just like being a reptile is just what it is you just you need the outside to help you regulate your body temperature that's literally all that means so if she were to use this analogy a little bit you know more positively with like less examples of pinning women against each other that would be really great but she does not so okay lastly of my personal peeves is the fact that she perpetuates emotional illiteracy and I just kind of came up with this term um for myself emotional illiteracy uh and it's this I'm sorry guys by the way like the sun was way back there and now like things are casting weird shadows but I'm almost done with the video so I'm just gonna keep going um she perpetuates emotional illiteracy which in my opinion is kind of like uh, so when someone is emotionally literate, I think they are aware of what emotions do for them They are aware of why emotions are here and they are aware of how to properly deal with their emotions in a way that is Productive and serves their overall mental health and serves their overall personal growth journey um, There are a lot of information. There's a lot of information about emotions out there But if you are really interested in learning about them um, In the context context that I'm speaking, I would check out teal swan um I might even link whatever videos below here and that might I think I might just do the emotional wake-up call that might be what it is um, but yeah so she perpetuates this emotional illiteracy by basically um, talking about how it's okay to have a little bit of shame how you know uh, like again that whole thing about boys not like if boys have strong feelings that that makes them less manly like uh, things like that um, not understanding that knowing yourself starts with honoring and accepting your emotions like she said in one of the confidence videos that she made that like you have to think about like who are you what are you what do you bring to the table you're not just this ball of emotions and i swear to god that's almost a quote verbatim um but you are though we all are a ball of emotions like even my boyfriend whom has lived all his life kind of like feeling his emotions but kind of gliding over them as well like is starting to realize what it really means to feel your emotions and we don't get to who we are unless we understand why we feel what we feel and unless we honor and validate that we feel the things that we feel so i'm just i just really have an issue with this um lastly i'm just gonna let you guys know the personal impact that she like watching her over time has had on me um i started to get more judgmental of myself and others obviously a con um i've started to i realized that after watching her videos i was actually losing energy it was like she was siphoning my energy which is insane um but there is one positive thing that i've gotten from her but Honestly, I could have gotten it from Teal Swan or any other spiritual teacher that I personally like to watch out there. And it's this idea of um, a, f a wave of feminism that is a little bit more feminine. So less women trying to be like men and more women settling into their femininity and settling into their feminine selves and seeing where our female energy is an even exchange for their male energy and vice versa. And that is really the only pro um, that I've gotten. I've gotten some, like I said, some interesting insights and things about confidence and the like, but it is so shrouded with negativity and just so, so shrouded with contradictions in the thing, her saying one thing and, and basically going against what she's saying by doing the thing that she's saying we shouldn't do, um, it's that it's just really hard and it's kind of very easy, if not conducive, to just throw the baby out with the bathwater. Which, for those of you who have never heard that saying, just kind of means like throw the teachings out with the teacher. Um, 
this is 45 minutes. Thank you so much for those of you who stuck with me. I really just wanted to make a full on video about this. Like Shallon, I'm not really the kind of YouTube that goes and edits in between. So thank you for watching this whole thing. I really appreciate it. And Shallon, if you watched this whole thing, I just, I just hope that you listened. And I just hope that you understand that I'm not coming at you in a way that I'm really trying to come at you in a way that hopefully helps you see that I I want I want you to grow and I want you to learn. But the only way that you're gonna grow and you're gonna learn is if you see all of this stuff that's coming to light. And instead of seeing it, you've genuinely just kind of like accused uh, D'Angelo Wallace of doxing you when he did not. Um, and you've basically minimized all of the really, really legitimate issues that have come up around your content and you're taking zero accountability. And I just, that's not okay with me. And that's why I'm leaving the, the schlantrash. So these are my confessions from a former shower liner. I mean, shower liner. And thank you. <laughs>